make a project I'm actually going to make a sprocket cushion so a sprocket cushion is a round cushion you can either have it as a chair cushion or you can have it as a floor cushion whatever you want to use it for now I've made my pattern here and I will make it available in the description below so you will be able to access it so I've got my template and I'm going to cut out 12 of these but the first thing I want to do is size it up so you are going to have to figure out the size that you want your cushion to be and there is a way that you can do it but I can never remember it so to be perfectly honest with you I just wing it because who doesn't do that so I've got it at 8.5 in height at the minute I'm actually going to make it 9.5 I want it to be slightly bigger and I am obviously going to have to take into account that there needs to be a seam allowance with this so the next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate it and I'm going to duplicate it three times because I'm going to cut out 12 pieces but I'm going to cut them out in threes next thing I want to do is I want to maximize my space on my mat so I'm actually going to grab this middle one I'm going to go to flip and I'm going to flip horizontally and I'm then just going to place them and manipulate them slightly so that they fit in because if I put them on the mat like this they're going to all cut out in the same direction and you do end up with some wastage there so the thing with patterns is you want to look at them you want to be able to work out how it's all going to come together and the best possible way to cut them because you don't want to end up with lots of wasted fabric so I'm just going to come and move these all together and work out the best way for them to sit and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them and this will cut them exactly as I see them I'm then just going to go to make it so you can see how it's arranged on our mat so we're going to get the most use out of our fabric as possible so I'm then going to go to continue and obviously we're going to use our maker today we are going to cut out fabric I'm just going to choose cotton and we can then go and put our rotary blade into our B clamp so you can see I've got my pink mat and I've already put my fabric on it now you want your fabric to be as close to your edges as possible and the reason for this is you want your fabric on the sticky part you don't want it kind of overhanging onto these pieces the reason for that is when it goes through the rollers it has a tendency to pucker slightly and if your fabric is not adhered to your mat properly it can affect the cut so you do want it to be as much on the sticky part of the mat as possible we're then going to go in with our fabric brayer and we're just going to give it a really good roll and make sure that that is as adhered as it can be so my machine is telling me that I need to put my rotary blade in so I'm going to open up my B clamp I'm going to remove my deep cut blade I've then got my rotary blade here and as always we're going to place it in teeth to teeth so that our guard is on the outside and we can then just close our clamp up I can then load my mat <laughs> is cut out you're just going to very gently remove your excess material from your mat I then go in with my small Cricut scraper and I can then very gently just remove each of my pieces so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with some different fabric and I'm going to cut out 12 of these in total all my 12 pieces and I've paired them in two so I should end up with six pairs of two and you're going to place them 
face front to face front and then you're going to pin them down one side and you're just going to go in and you're going to sew down that one side and you're going to do that for each of your six pairs. So you can see I've got my two sewn pieces here and they're sewn through the middle. I've also got my easy press and I'm just going to place it on there and I'm just going to press that seam just for a few seconds just to really define it and make sure that my seam is nice and straight and I'm going to do that with all my pieces. So you can see if we put all our two pieces together we get this lovely circle but I'm actually going to take away three of them. So I'm just going to take away this one and then this one and then this one and that then leaves me with three and I'm going to sew these all together so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place these two on top of each other front side to front side and I'm going to sew down this end and I'm going to sew down this side so when we then open it up all these pieces will then be sewn together so you can see we then end up with this semicircle and we've got two of them. So all we're going to do is we're going to place them on top of each other. So again, front to front. And we're then going to pin them and we're just going to sew a straight line all the way across. Now you want to, you can see there's a slight semicircle in here. You want to get rid of that, so we're just going to sew a straight line and you're just going to adjust your seam allowance so that you just sew above where this little small circle is. I've just sewn down here and then come into this part. And you'll see when we open it, we then have this lovely circle. Now it's slightly puckered here, but that's fine because that's actually the effect we want. And we are going to put a button in there. So that is the top of our cushion done. So we're now going to move on to the next part. So I've got some grey fabric here, which I've just folded over on itself. And then I've got the top of my cushion. This grey fabric is actually going to be the base. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm just going to cut this shape very roughly. I'm not going to cut it out on the machine. It's too big. I don't want to sew it. So by doing this, I'll just have one continuous circle. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a seam allowance. And I'm just going to very roughly just start cutting around it. And of course you want to pin it, I should have said, you do want to pin it. I'm just winging it because that's what I tend to do when I'm sewing. I kind of just see how it goes, but obviously you do want to save as much fabric as possible and you do want to try and be accurate. So this is a case of do as I say and not as I do. So I'm just going to continue cutting round and then we'll have a full circle. So you can see I've got my circle here and you can also see I've got this band. So this band is basically the depth of our pillow. So the first thing you need to do is work out your band. So you're going to measure the circumference of your circle and then you're going to times it by three and then you're going to add an extra inch on. You can then cut your band and you're then going to sew it so that both ends go round in a circle. Now the depth of your band will depend on how deep you want your pillow to be. Once mine is all sewn together, it should have a depth of about four and a half inches, which is what I want. But you yourself can choose your own depth. So you can see that I've now pinned right along the outer edge and I'm just going to go ahead and sew this seam all the way around in a big circle. I've pinned all the way around. Now this is not a patterned piece of fabric but obviously if I was going to have a patterned piece of fabric 
then this would be face to face, exactly the same as before. This is the inside of our cushion. I'm just going to go around and sew this circle, but I am going to leave a gap of about two to three inches so that I can then stuff my pillow. So I've now completely stuffed my cushion using some fibre filling. You can get this, I get mine from Donnell Mill, but you can get it from any good kind of fabric store. And all I'm going to do is I'm just then going to sew this opening together so it becomes a complete seam. So the only thing left for me to do is I've got a button here. I'm going to place it in the middle of my top of my cushion and I'm going to get a needle and thread and I'm just going to sew all the way through the cushion and all the way back, securing my button in place. And it's going to give it that nice pin tucked effect as well.